All right, ladies and gentlemen, this is our second attempt at uh, recording this video. We had to make some adjustments, and well, before we get into that, how you doing? I'm Kino, Kino Thomas, with STEM with Kino.com, and this is a introductory video, possibly to a series, uh, for the United States Air Force undergraduate pilot training applicants. Uh, this is for um, before you get to UPT, you're going to have to go through initial flight screening. The Initial flight screening is done in an aircraft called the DA-20. All right, and this is the DA-20 Katana. Um, the simulator is pretty representative of what you will find in the actual aircraft, and you know most of the simulators that I try to find are ones where the switches and everything works, and then you can actually go through a procedure. So this way, you can actually be at home on your desktop or your laptop. And you can actually actually go through the procedures without paying an instructor and burning fuel at the same time when that propeller is spinning. So um, this is a pretty decent uh, representation. Like I said, we'll look around the uh, aircraft a little bit. We've seen the outside already, um, but um, it's pretty decent. Um, I am looking for more, and um, if you guys. Uh, get any information about something that's uh, more realistic than this after you watch this video and I appreciate it if you could uh, send an email to kinothomas at gmail.com um, but a um, couple things initially I noticed is the mixture um, there was no mixture there Introductory video, possibly to. <clears throat> All right, ladies and gentlemen, this is our second attempt at uh, recording this video. We had to make some adjustments, and well, before we get into that, how you doing? I'm Kino, Kino Thomas, with STEM with Kino.com, and this is a introductory video, possibly to a series. Uh, for the United States Air Force undergraduate pilot training applicants. Uh, this is for, um, before you get to UPT, you're going to have to go through initial flight screening. The initial flight screening is done in an aircraft called the DA-20. Right. And this is the DA-20 Katana. Um, the simulator is pretty representative of what you will find in the actual aircraft. And, you know, most of the simulators that I try to find are ones where the switches and everything works, and then you can actually go through a procedure. So this way, you can actually be at home on your desktop or your laptop, and you can. So we'll see how this one works when we crank the engines down. A20. Alright, and this is the DA20. <clears throat> Alright, ladies and gentlemen, this is our second attempt at uh, recording this video. We had to make some adjustments, and well, before we get into that, how you doing? I'm Kino, Kino Thomas, with STEM with Kino.com, and this is a introductory video possibly to a series uh, for the United States Air Force undergraduate pilot training applicants. Uh, this is for um, before you get to UPT you're going to have to go through initial flight screening. The initial flight screening is done in an aircraft called the DA-20. Alright, and this is the DA-20 Katana. Um, the simulator is pretty representative of what you will find in the actual aircraft. And, you know, most of the simulators that I try to find are ones where the switches and everything works, and then you can actually go through a procedure. So this way, you can actually be at home on your desktop or your laptop, 
and you can actually actually go through the procedures without paying an instructor and burning fuel at the same time when that propeller is spinning. So um, this is a pretty decent uh, representation, like I said. We'll look around the uh, aircraft a little bit. We've seen the outside already, um, but um, it's pretty decent. Um, I am looking for more. And um, if you guys uh, get any information about something that's uh, more realistic than this after you watch this video, and I appreciate it. If you could uh, send an email to kinothomas at gmail.com. Um, but a um, couple things initially I noticed is the mixture. Um, there was no mixture there. I do see a fuel selector valve down there. It is in the uh, open position, uh, but no mixture controls. Uh, some of these markings are in German, so I am probably going to have to. Uh, invest in another one because I want to make this as representative or realistic as possible. That is always the goal with uh, stemwithkino.com. You know them before you go. So you have a tool that you can actually utilize, go through your checklist flows and everything. So uh, like I said, the exterior is pretty much a representation of what you would see uh, if we look around and look at this aircraft. It's a uh, composite. It's an aircraft made out of composite materials and uh, you know it's a pretty looking bird really nice looking bird here um, now I did forget to uh, let's see I did forget to uh, make some adjustments on the um, controls but I will go ahead and I will work through that this is my second time doing this and I basically just want to um, I get the video out of the way I don't want to say it like that but um, it's basically um, get this content out uh, because this is a pretty decent um, simulator I thought you can see the pilot in there let's see if he yeah, he actually moves the controls and everything, so that's pretty decent there. And the flight control surfaces, they do move. And see that trim tab out there, get that rudder moving around, kicking that rudder around. Looks like his legs are moving the rudder too. That's pretty neat. All right, so let's jump in. This is basically not, probably not going to be the end all be all for us um, as we look for. Um, Simulators. Another thing I noticed previously flying is that the uh, radio con radio controls were not uh, very effective uh, as far as like uh, moving them for selecting frequencies and, th and things of that nature. So um, no big deal though. But um, you know, just to give you guys uh, initial update on what we plan, we plan on selecting a flight simulator that is as close as we can get it to the real thing. And uh, without further ado, we'll just go ahead and um, jump into it. Uh, so, we'll talk about the before engine start checklist. Rudder pedals, adjusted. Seat belts, fasten and adjusted. Parking brake set, we'll go ahead and we'll pull that out. Um, if you highlight over, it will identify the actual control that you are utilizing or manipulating. So you put your hand in, squeeze the left mouse button, pull back. And that's pretty neat. You actually have that noise that you would hear. Here we're locking the brakes up, and here we're releasing them. So this is, you know, I think they did a good job with that. I'm actually going to email them and um, talk and just discuss some things because I am a flight instructor. And uh, using a simulator, you want it to be as real as possible so you can flow. So the parking brake is set. Uh, we're going to move the, well first we're going to close the canopy. Let's get that closed up. Okay, the canopy is closed and locked at this point. Um, before we start the propeller and blowing stuff and all kinds of debris into the cockpit, that would not be good. So we're going to zoom in a little bit. Click and zoom. Alright, we're going to zoom in a little bit. 
Um, just to give you a basic overview, we have a magnetic compass in there. We have an airspeed indicator that tells us how fast we're going. We have an attitude indicator. And they basically, this is normal, they basically spill over like that when the gyros are not stabilized, spinning and stabilized. We have an altimeter that tells us how high we are. Uh, we have an omni bearing selector for VOR navigation. We have a turn coordinator, uh, directional gyro, and a vertical speed indicator. So this is basically the six primary flight instruments that you will find in any aircraft. Um, you Sometimes you may have a turn and slip indicator, but they do the same thing. They measure your rate of roll, not your rate of roll, your rate of turn. And it gives you an indication of how coordinated your flight is. Um, your turn, not your flight, but your, your turns are. Um, so uh, continuing our flow, our right, parking brake is set. We're going to turn our generator master switch on. So click that on. And we see our gyroscopic instruments starting to show some movement. This is representative of what happens to um, our flight instruments. These are gyroscopic flight instruments, and you can hear some initial spinning. Those are the gyroscopes inside of the instrument spinning, and they are attempting to stabilize. They were fully stabilized when we turn, well, according to SIM. Uh, but these are not reliable indications at this point. Uh, the attitude indicator is level. I'll float my little point over there. And the uh, directional gyro has stabilized, but um, it's still not reliable at this point until we turn the engine on and the vacuum system uh, starts working. All right, so the generator master switch is on. Canopy is closed and locked. Um, the canopy warning light is extinguished. Ignition switch off. It is in the off position, and we'll go ahead and float over here and insert the key. Okay, the key is in the ignition at this point. Uh, we'll talk about the ignition in a little bit because it's not like your car. Your car... Your vehicle's ignition, if it is a keyed ignition, has a, uh, a off position, a start position, and then you let it go, and then it will go back into both. We also have R and L here because we can operate uh, two different sets of magnetos or spark plugs, like you, you would call them in your car. But we have magnetos, and they are dual, so there's a right and the left side. Moving right along with the checklist, we'll, we'll turn our instrument and map lights on. We'll float down here. And just to just show you what you're looking for, when we turn our instrument lights on, we'll see a, we'll see lighting over the instruments when we turn this on. Alright, we have our one and our map light switch. We'll come up and we can see that the light is on. We can see some electrical uh, our timer there. Um, and we can see voltage is up. Um, it's in the green arc, and so we're good for a start there. Uh, ignition switch off key is inserted. Our nav, our instrument, and uh, nav lights on. Our strobe lights are here, um, but I'm not even going to really go into it to view. But we should see a, a red rotating beacon. The red rotating beacon indicates that we are about to start our our propeller. So. Even if people have on hearing protection, they can look and say, okay, that guy's about to start his engine or his power plant. And so we don't want to get next to the propeller because it is about to start spinning. Um, another uh, way that we as pilots um, alert ground crew or people walking around our aircraft that our engine is about to stop, we either like open up a window or some type of access window and we yell out clear or clear prop okay that is pretty much universal in general aviation uh, situations uh, position lights uh, we should have some nav lights here all right we got strobe landing oh taxi light position lights okay so these are position lights all right these are red and green lights on our wingtips and a white light on the tail so that is on and uh, let's just take a look because that is something that I haven't. Uh, we have some strobes on. I don't see a rotating beacon, but on the we have on our left wingtip we have a red light, 
And if we come around to the right wing tip, we should see a green light. And the green light is lit and we have our strobes on, but there is no red rotating beacon. Back into the airpl uh, airplane, or into the cockpit, I should say. Okay, so that humming noise is uh, just our electrical equipment operating. All right, so uh, we have a sliding window. All right, sliding window is utilized so we can actually yell out clear prop. So anybody that can audibly hear us knows our prop is about to start. So there is a two um, tier kind of system where we have our rotating beacon in a normal situation and then we go ahead and we slide this window back. We lean towards this window with our mouth and we yell out clear prop. Now you would raise your boom mic so you're not yelling into your instructor or occupant's ear uh, because that will be coming over the communication system you yelling. Okay, so sliding open is the sliding windows open. We yell clear prop. Now um, this is not really representative, but we're going to throw our throttle forward. Okay, throttles in the uh, forward position. Prop. Okay, that is pretty much universal in general aviation uh, situations. Uh, position lights. Uh, we should have some nav lights here. All right, we got strobe landing. Oh, taxi light, position lights. Okay, so these are position lights. All right, these are red and green lights on our wingtips and a white light on the tail. So that is on. And uh, let's just take a look because that is something that I haven't. Uh, we have some strobes on. I don't see a rotating beacon, but on the we have on our left wingtip we have a red light. And if we come around to the right wing tip, we should see a green light. And the green light is lit and we have our strobes on, but there is no red rotating beacon. Back into the airpl uh, airplane, or into the cockpit, I should say. Okay, so that humming noise is uh, just our electrical equipment operating. All right, so uh, we have a sliding window. All right, sliding window is utilized so we can actually yell out clear prop so anybody that can audibly hear us knows our prop is about to start so there is a two um, tier kind of system where we have our rotating beacon in a normal situation and then we go ahead and we slide this window back we lean towards this window with our mouth and we yell out clear prop now you would raise your boom mic so you're not yelling into your instructor or occupant's ear uh, because that will be coming over the communication system you yelling. Okay, so sliding open is sliding windows open. We yell clear prop. prop. Now um, this is not really representative, but we're going to throw our throttle forward. Okay, throttles in the uh, forward position. Mixture rich. There's no mixture control in the simulator. We're going to turn our fuel pump to the on position our fuel pump let's zoom in a little bit so you can actually see it and this is the fuel pump All right. it's highlighted it's off now it's in the on position you saw the rocket switch go up and you can hear that noise that boop, 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 that is the fuel pump operating at this point All right. for the primer 10 or 8 um, full and then off all right, so we prime our, our aircraft just introducing fuel into the cylinders to get this thing fired up. All right, we're going to bring our throttle back to about a quarter inch. We'll pull that back. Uh, we're going to throw our prop forward. Okay. That's good to go. And what we're going to do is we're going to turn our ignition. We have off, right, left, both. Uh, both spark plugs are magneto, so we're going to turn this to the right. We're going to hold it, and let's uh, just um, still have our gear, both in. Okay, and this is kind of cool because the airplane will actually rumble. Our generator light is off. And what we want to do is we want to adjust our throttle to 1,000 RPMs. Our 
RPM gauge is slightly to the right here. We'll zoom in so you can see it a little bit better. All right. Okay, and we're slightly above 1,000. We'll just pull the throttle back a little bit and get that needle to sit. Now, you say, that's not 1,000, that's 10. Well, these numbers indicate um, they kind of, they're calibrated in hundreds of RPM. So we add two zeros to the number we see. So this is 500, 1,000 RPMs, 1,500, 2,000 RPMs, and we never want to be at 2,500 RPMs because then that would uh, get us past our red line. Uh, oil pressure. The oil pressure is up and it is in the green arc. The temperature should be coming up soon if this uh, simulator is 100% representative of what happens in a real airplane. And again, we got to realize this is just a simulator. They do the best they can. They did a pretty impressive job to me as far as simulators go and indications that we should see. But there are some things that are off and I will document them as we go along through the video. So now we've adjusted our throttle to about a thousand RPMs. Let's crank that back. No, actually we're slightly under. Okay, so we're at a thousand RPMs. Remember adding two zeros to the 10 indication indicates 1000 RPMs. Okay, uh, our start warning light is extinguished. Our, gear, our um, generator warning light is out. And we'll glance down at our ammeter which is charging a little bit. It's probably compensating for the electrical energy that we use. Um, you know, we kind of, before the engine started, there was nothing, the generator was not putting that electrical energy back into the battery. It was just kind of burning off the battery. And so now what happens is the generator is starting to recharge that battery for another start in the future. Just like your car, your car does the same thing. You turn your car on, the battery actually starts the car. Once the engine starts going, the, the uh, alternator is attached to it, and the alternator provides the electrical energy and feeds energy back to the battery so it can be restarted again. So when you're stopping and going and doing your daily activities in your vehicle, this is actually the electrical thing that is happening with your car. If you have a bad alternator, you're just going to be draining the battery and you won't be able to restart. Uh, so just a little automotive information there. So now, um, continuing with the, uh, we checked our oil pressure, temperature, and I am using a real world checklist. All right, we're going to turn our avionics master switch on. We're going to come over here to the panel. We're going to back up just a little bit. Our avionics power switch is there, and we should see some indications. Well, maybe not. All right, let's see. I just wanted to flip something down. Okay, all right. I'm just checking that out. So we'll bring our transponder to standby. And let's see if I can't, because we should be at 1200 for visual flight rules. So we set our transponder to standby. Seeing if we can't get this thing to move. Okay. And let's turn our GPS on. And not too bright because if you bring it out too too far what it'll do it will the illumination will come up too bright all right we just want it just enough so we can see the differentiation between the um, backlighting uh, for the markers there's a message there click it we are inside airspace we're inside class Delta airspace and I forgot to mention we are at Trenton Mercer Airport New Jersey at this point now, what I mentioned before is that um, I could not, maybe there is a, hold up, see that didn't happen before. All right, so that's good. Um, let's see. All right, let's get this rolling. Let's see if we can't get this to 133.7, which is the ATIS and ATIS, that is the Automatic Terminal Information Service. Uh, that you will find at control air fields. I'm trying to be very gentle about how we um, with I'm trying to get this 133.7 I think we got something going on here. 
So it does work, but I think with the rumbling, um, that should swap. Okay. Okay, what we have is a little swap switch here. Okay, so basically what we have is 133.7, which is ATIS on the standby side. And then we have uh, 121.9, we're currently on the ground frequency. And this is what takes place at controlled airfields. Okay, we listen to the automatic terminal information service. This tells us what's going on at the airport, runway in use, temperature, uh, dew point, winds, um, landing, departing runway six. So it's giving you the active runway, weather conditions, if there's deer on the field, uh, just things the pilots should know if they're going to be operating in this airspace. And it's not just for aircraft on the ground at the airport, but it's also for arrival aircraft. So we listen to ATIS before we actually get to the airport. Okay, so um, let's continue our checklist. All right, we listen to ATIS. Our aviation and navigation equipment is set. Our flight instruments will check and set here. All right, it's really um, not in the set here. We have zero airspeed. The attitude indicator is erect and stable. The altimeter is set for 213 feet at Trenton Mercer Airport. The turn coordinator is the, the wings are level and the tube is full of fluid. That looks good. We're cross checking our directional gyro with our magnetic compass. This is a north seeking instrument. Um, it's kind of manipulated or oper it operates by aligning itself with the magnetic flux lines of the earth and it, and it looks for uh, true or magnetic north, not true north. Uh, magnetic north is pretty much what we fly by. That's what our runways are labeled by magnetic direction and our vertical speed indicator is indicating zero. So our flight instruments are checked and set. Um, our taxi light, we would turn that on at night and our parking brake, we would release. Before we would release our parking brake, um, we, are, we are currently at the west ramp at Trenton Mercer Airport. So um, basically, I'm just gonna go through the theatrics of the pilot and the controller. So um, the pilot, would be on 121.9 as we are. We have that in the frequency here on the active frequency, not the standby. The active frequency is always the frequency on the top in this particular simulator. Now, um, when we communicate, we, say, we, we, we would say who we are calling, who we are, where we are, and what we want. So that is a common theme when we're talking to controllers and ground controllers, um, air controllers, that's a common theme. Who we're calling, who we are, where we are, and our intentions. Okay, so it would go like this. Trenton Ground, and this uh, Delta Echo t <laughs> Tango Lima Kilo, that's really too much. American tell numbers don't run like that. First, the American tell number will be an N, and then whatever. So we'll just say an old airplane that I used to teach in at Trenton Mercer Airport when I was a full-time flight instructor there, November 31 Sierra Delta will be our tail number. All right. And what I mean by the tail number is the actual numbers that are on the either the body of the aircraft or in the tail. We just call them a tail number. All right. So don't disregard that D-E-T-L-K, Delta Echo Tango Lima Kilo. Wow, that'd be crazy. Um, but we're going to say November 31 SD, but the way we say it is November 31 Sierra Delta. So it would go like this Trenton Ground, who we're calling. Who are we? November 31 Sierra Delta is at the West Ramp with information, I don't know, Oscar. Ready to taxi. Okay, so we've listened to ATIS. We know that runway 6 is the active runway. 
and the unless we wanted a different runway, we could re we could request a different runway. But we are not. We're going to go ahead and take Alpha Alpha Taxiway Alpha and Juliet to runway six. All right. So um, let me look around a little bit because sometimes they have airplanes rolling around us, and we need to. Uh, oh wow! See the uh, highway out there or the roadway with the vehicles moving. That's pretty neat. Okay, so Trenton Ground, November 31, Sierra Delta is at the West Ramp with information Oscar ready to taxi. Okay, tower we're listening at, and it's a November 31, Sierra Delta, Trenton Tower. You're cleared to taxi runway 6 via taxiway Alpha, Juliet, hold short of runway 6. And then we would come back. Uh, Trenton Tower, November 31, Sierra Delta, taxi runway 6 via taxiway Alpha Juliet. Okay, so notice how I talked about how the controller is going to talk to you. He or she is going to be like November 31, Sierra Delta, Trenton Tower. So it's still that format, who you're calling, who you are, but the controller doesn't do say um, where they are and their intentions because, number one, we know where they are. They're in the control tower. But they will give you instructions and how to execute those instructions. So, November 31, Sierra Delta, Trenton Tower. You're clear to taxi runway 6 via taxiway Alpha to Juliet. And then we come back, Trenton Tower, November 31, Sierra Delta, taxi. Um, or most guys would just be like, uh, taxi, taxi to runway 6, Alpha, Juliet, 31, Sierra Delta. So, what we've done is we're acknowledging the tower's instructions. We're reading back. That's what's called a read back. Okay. If it was a clearance, they'd be like read back correct. You know, like on some IFR clearances. Okay. So we're going to release the brake. The brakes are released. All right. And we're going to push the throttle up a little bit. Get some movement. And we are at the west ramp. That would be where like Bronson Aviation is where that fuel pump is and um, we just want to we want the throttle to get us going. We don't want to be like zooming. So if you look to the left there you see A three four and one six. So runway six is the active runway. We are clear to cross all um, Runways, well, we're clear across runway 3416 via Alpha because 3416 is not active, but we would still look at the approach end because there could be some landing traffic with no, and I told you guys these controls are a little bit mushy because of the uh, sensitivity that I set for another aircraft, but we will get through this. All right, we'll maintain the uh, taxiway as best we can. And really, in real life, in a real airplane, it is not this hard. You would operate the foot pedals. And we don't turn with a steering wheel. We actually turn with our feet. And there's a different differential braking, which means we brake the right main landing gear for a right turn and add a little power. And then the left main gear is still able to roll. So we can brake differentially, which means we can brake either our right side or our left side. But typically when we stop straight, we're actually applying both brakes together. Um, the best indicator that um, we're off our brakes because we don't want to ride our brakes is our heels are on the floor. Um, aircraft, most aircraft imp implement what we call toe brakes. All right, so um, you actually have to have your heels off the floor and depressing the top of the rudder pedal in order to um, get the. Uh, brakes to be um, depressed. It's not like your car you press one pedal. We actually have two brake pedals if you would. Alright, and let's crank this throttle back from a little bit faster than I would like to be. Alright, so we would depress the brakes gently. And I should have uh, changed this uh, setting but we're just kind of just doing a demonstration for um, our subscribers. Um, this is primarily for our Air Force undergraduate pilot people that actually have flight contracts. You're going to have to go through 
an initial flight screening and the DA-20 is the aircraft that that's going to take place in uh, probably in Colorado all right so what we're going to do is um, six is the active runway which means the the wind is blowing or the prevailing wind I should say is blowing from that direction all right and um, what we're going to do is what it is a common practice to do is normally when we have our throttle up um, and I'm going to do a little weird little turn here that looks a little weird but it's really not that weird what we're going to do is we're going to get ourselves off to the side so that if any other airplanes are ready to go um, they can kind of just move ahead of us if they're ready to um, go which means their pre-takeoff checks have already been done or what we call an engine run up okay so we are actually pointing in the same direction of the departure runway and like I said we get ourselves off to the side a little bit just in case another aircraft is ready for departure and so they don't have to sit there and wait for us to go do our thing alright so we'll come to a full stop idle or throttle and this thing when you hit the idle throttle it goes a little bit it does a little bit more than it, it goes a little bit more than it should and so that's why the generator light is on but that's no big deal our, break, our parking brake is uh, is locked okay so our parking brakes are on alright so at this point this is kinda like our final check we pre-flighted the plane um, Ex the exterior is good we checked our fuel our oil all that good stuff and so now this is kinda like our pre takeoff check it's like our last check before we take off so basically what's going to take place is we're going to go through a procedure called the run up our parking brake is set our throttles idle our mixture will be set to rich if we had a control for that but we don't in the simulator and um, we would check for RPM rise them full rich as far as our mixture but we don't we can't manipulate that if we don't have it now what we're gonna do is we're gonna um, and let me just remind you the throttle you're gonna see the throttle moving forward and then back this is your gas pedal like in your car if we push forward like you will push forward on your accelerator in your vehicle the engine revs up uh, the transmission speeds up does its thing and you drive faster in the aircraft when we push the throttle forward the propeller spins faster and provides more thrust and that's how we get our acceleration so um, another important gauge that we need to take notice of is the RPM gauge this is our RPM gauge and again it's calibrated in hundreds alright so 10 is actually 1000 RPMs or what we call revolutions per minute so the propeller is spinning at 1000 times per minute we call that revolutions per minute it's doing a complete full 360 degree turn uh, well 1000 of them every minute alright so throttles idle now what the checklist calls for us to do is the throttle up so what we're gonna do is we're gonna bring our throttle up and we'll notice this by the RPM gauge alright so we'll zoom in on that and we want to bring it up to 17 which is two clicks past the 1.5 or 1500 RPM so the throttle comes up and another thing is we throttle up we're gonna look at the background at the asphalt or pavement or whatever surface we have here we're up at 1700 and we're looking at the pavement this pavement is kinda of slightly moving a little bit just very but you wouldn't this would not happen in real life because as a backup in addition to the parking brake you would have your your toes on the uh, tow brakes just in case the parking brake failed for redundancy so we wouldn't be getting any movement at all but again I remind you this is a simulator they do the designers do the best they could do and it is a very good job if I, I, I may say so um, they did a really good job I like all the noises and the, and the switches and stuff like that because it's very representative of what you would hear in the aircraft now back to our ignition we talked about our ignition we have an off right left in both position it's currently in a both position and both magnetos or like in your car spark plugs are firing during the power stroke um, and you could there's a four stroke cycle that pistons go through 
even in your car, there's an intake, compression, power, and exhaust, and that's what keeps that propeller turning. All right, and it's a perfectly timed thing because at the power stroke or as the compression stroke finishes, the spark pl plugs light up. Now in airplanes, we have two sets of spark plugs. In this case, we have a right side and a left side. And that is so if one fails, then we um, basically, we have a backup. Okay, there's a lot of redundancy in airplanes because you can't just pull over and check the oil. All right, so, um, okay, so we're at 1700 RPMs. Now what we're gonna do is something called a magnetos check. The, magne the RPM indicator really does not respond like it should. Okay, so we would take this key position and we would go from both to left. Okay, and what we will see is a drop in RPM. Right, we will make note of that. We take it back to the both position and then the RPM gauge will go up. Now we noted the last position because now what we're going to do is we're going to take it to the right magneto. You would get another drop. Now, you would have to take note of those two positions out of the two positions on the right and the left side of the magnetos we don't want a very big spread which means we only want a half a click in this gauge of differential between the two alright now we would also do a propeller check we would throttle up to 2000 alright which I'm gonna do and we're gonna throttle up and again this is not representative of what you would see but you have to understand that. So we throttle up to 2000 and what we're going to do is we're going to manipulate the propeller level. So we do it one. Okay, it's not going to give me the full swing. Let me back up a little bit. All right, so we would go one, check for a drop in RPM. Bring it back up, back down, check for a rise in manifold pressure. All right, and so typically that's what we're looking for. All right. We would also look at the vacuum gauges. There is no vacuum gauge here. So one, we pull it back. We look for a drop in RPM. We pull it back and bring it back up. Pull it back again. Look for a rise in manifold pressure. So it's just manipulating back, seeing a dropping up. Now, it does drop if we look at the um, RPM gauge, um, but I don't think you get a rise in. Um, manifold pressure. I think the manifold actually it did rise a little bit if you look at the manifold pressure needle. So okay, let's give um, the designers credit for that. Alright, we check our vacuum gauge at this point, making sure that at this high power setting that our vacuum system is going to work. And then um, what we're going to do is um, we're going to check our engine gauges there in the green alright and at the 2000 and then we're just gonna come back now there's a little memory aid called lift lift stands for lights icing flaps transponder alright so we're slowly coming back to a thousand RPMs and all we're gonna do is we're just gonna do we're gonna go through our departure alright um, before we do our departure we're gonna go through a takeoff brief so what we do is pull our power back make sure we're idle, we'll release our parking brakes and then what we're going to do is we're going to point ourselves in the right direction. So we're going to add a little throttle get the, get the plane rolling a little bit alright and after we get it rolling a little bit we're going to pull some of that power out. We just want to get some momentum going once we get our momentum going, then we don't really need to uh, keep that power in. We're going to break just a little bit to sharpen our turn. Alright, and basically the other video we did, the engine, we, we cranked the engine volume down as best we could. I don't want to zero it out because, you know, I want you to actually, you know, hear some of the engine indications okay so now let's just say we're waiting and there's another airplane just waiting for takeoff so what we're going to do is we're going to go through a pre-takeoff brief the generator light is going to come on don't worry about that um, so we're just going to talk about some things we do a pre-takeoff brief because we want um, an automatic response for any engine abnormalities 
What do you mean engine abnormalities? Well, let's say we get rolling. We have a couple phases of takeoff. Of, of takeoff. First, we, uh, we're going to throttle up a little bit. We're going to check our engine instruments. We're going to allow our aircraft to roll. We're going to do something called rotation. Rotation is simply raising the nose wheel. We've raised the nose wheel by use of an elevator, and then what happens is we're still going to be accelerating, but we aerodynamically take the weight off of the wheels. So the weight of the aircraft is transferred from the wheels, because we're currently sitting on our wheels now, to the wings. So the wings start producing lift, and we have something called liftoff. All right, so we're going to rotate. We're going to gently, and it's going to go kind of fast. So we're going to gently pull back on the yoke. The nose is going to come up. The nose gear is off. We pull the nose gear off as early as possible because that is the turning part. It is very sensitive. The main landing gear is strong. and we're, I'm not going to say we're going to hammer the hell out of it, but um, it can take a pounding. All right, so we try to hold off the nose gear as long as possible, uh, or we get it up off the ground as long as possible, as quickly as possible, so we don't put too much wear and tear on it. All right, so back to so ro that's rotation. Then we lift off. Uh, we're going to rotate at about eh, 55, 50 knots to 55 knots. Uh, we should break ground at 60. Uh, we're going to set our flex. So I said lights. All right, so we're going to turn our landing light on. Icing, we, we use carburetor, uh, well, anti-icing protection. Flaps, we're going to set for takeoff. The indicator shows that the flaps are up. Okay, it's going to move to the middle position. All right, and we could actually visually check our flaps by looking left. We see that the wing root to about the, you know, I guess the mid-wing or so, that control surface is pivoted downward, okay? That is the flap. It is not the aileron. I'm wiggling the left aileron right now. And again, we look over to the other side. We could see that the flap is extended, okay? And, and uh, the outboard part, uh, didn't want to do that. Let's come back. The outboard part is the aileron. Okay, these are responsible for what we call rolling the aircraft. Okay, so um, let's go ahead and uh, get our little window closed up. Okay, because if we leave that open on takeoff, then air is going to be forcing itself in via the slipstream. And then, you know, papers and charts and everything could be blown around, so we definitely want that closed. So, right before we take off lights, icings, flaps, and the transponder goes to the altitude encoding position. Right, let's zoom in. So, you can see it's on standby. On. And we got the flash. Wow, that's pretty neat. All right, and we'll go to the, it's in the altitude position. Okay, so. Um, at this point, on standby, Okay, we're going to turn to the tower frequency, which is 120.7. Okay, we have 120.7 set in the standby frequency, and we heard some chatter from another aircraft talking to ground. Okay, we've hit the swap, so the 120.7 came from the bottom, the standby, and jumped up to active. So that is the active frequency that we would trans, uh, transmit on. All right, all right, so we're going to add some throttle here. Get our aircraft rolling. Now, I didn't really quite finish the uh, takeoff briefing. Okay, if we have an engine abnormality or failure before rotation, we're going to idle the throttle brake heavily. If we have an engine abnormality or failure after rotation um, and we break ground, then what we're going to do is idle the throttle and we're going to. Um, we're going to idle the throttle and we're going to, um, sorry, got a lot going on here trying to stay focused. We're going to idle the throttle and um, we're going to try to land on the sufficient runway that's left. After takeoff, 
we're in the climb out and we have an engine abnormality of failure then we're going to assume something called best glide and this aircraft has the ability to glide with no engine okay so we still have controllability it is not the end of the world if we lose the engine okay we'll still have controllability so at this point we're on 120.7 our pre-takeoff briefing is complete all right our lights are, are set our flaps are set our transponder and we would just note our takeoff time all right and our takeoff time is noted all right and um, after that um, we look at our cruise checklist or I'm sorry our climb checklist our climb checklist is calling for throttle full uh, we'll set the flaps of cruise after we get over or above any 50 foot obstacles typically 50 foot obstacles that we mainly concern ourselves with and our airspeed is going to be 70 knots and we'll glance at our, uh, our um, engine gauges to make sure that they're good to go okay so I'm going to just zoom out a little bit here so I can get more of a field of vision here and I can see my uh, manifold pressure let's see if we can still okay good all right so we'll keep it right here we can still see our airspeed indicator we can see our engine instruments because we're going to have to glance at them on take on tape on our climb out so now at this point we're on 120.7 which is trenton tower and again who we're calling who we are where we are in our intentions so we go like trenton tower november 31 sierra delta is ready for takeoff runway six now if i'm ready for takeoff at runway six the controller actually saw the ground controller is in the tower saw me taxi over here so they know where I am it's not like a big secret like they got to look for me and this airport is not that big where the controller cannot see you. so uh, Trenton Tower November 31 Sierra Delta is ready to taxi at runway 6 tower would say November 31 Sierra Delta Trenton Tower you're clear for takeoff runway 6 and I would say clear for takeoff runway 6 November 31 Sierra Delta Again, if you remember, we changed our tail numbers. That Delta Echo Tank, Tango Lima, Kilo, that'd be a nightmare for a student. They don't even really know how to communicate, first of all. So then you're going to have that crazy tail number. That, that'd be like a nightmare. You're trying to fly the plane, keep on top of what you're doing, and then Delta Echo Tango Lima, Kilo. Okay. It's a good thing this is a simulator and not a real plane. Because whoever registered an airplane with that tail number, it's just like wow you know okay so we're following the taxiway out the yellow taxi line will bring us to runway six that is our final confirmation that we are on the right runway okay so we'll go ahead and we'll line ourselves up right. and again I told you these controls are mushy I adjusted the setting but just for this video we are just gonna do our thing now, a couple last minute notes in a second here. Okay, we're going to get an idle. Get ourselves over here a little bit. Now, I'm candid a little bit and I'll straighten it out. But I am not looking right here when I get my takeoff roll. I am looking down here. That's what I'm looking at. So there's going to be a lot going on and stuff. But you hear me call out some stuff and everything and so uh, we kicked the tires now we're gonna light the fires okay so you can see the throttle moving up or our gas pedal we'll get some movement going on look at our airspeed indicator the top left instrument we're rolling airspeed alive 55 knots rotation And we have liftoff. 213, we're above our 50 foot obstacle. We can go ahead and uh, get those flaps up. Our flaps are moving up. Now, what we're going to need to do is we're going to have to, we have something called a left turning tendency going on. And I'll talk about that right now. What happens is we only have one propeller out there, and um, it has a left turning tendency. It has a tendency to turn us turn our nose to the left alrighty and let's go ahead I'm pitching and talking and stuff and you know beautiful day out here 
Alright, so we want to climb out at about 70, so what I am doing is pitching. If I pull my nose up, the airspeed is going to bleed off and slow down. If I push the yoke forward, or the control stick forward, we're going to pick up airspeed. Alright, and you can see that in the indicator over there. So we want to try our best to maintain about a heading of 060 as best we can. And my target altitude, we'll just uh, have our target altitude be 2000. So we want to fly about 70 knots up to about 2000 feet. So I pitch and I make adjustments. And what I mean by pitching is raising and lowering my nose. All right. If I go a little fast, I'm going to raise the nose. If I'm going a little slow, I'm going to push the nose over. Okay, but all in all, we're a little fast, so I'm going to let the nose come up a little bit. And we're approaching 2,000 feet, and we're a little left of where we want to be, and I'm making the adjustments for that. We're still at 70, we're at 2,000, we will pitch, set up power, throttle comes back. And so we pitch, power, and then we trim. So we'll pull our throttle back. Now another thing, the, the RPM gauge kind of, it just stays up and um, you know so we're not really getting a proper RPM indication as you saw the throttle come back in the bottom of the uh, screen there uh, but we set our pitch we're setting our power we set our power and now we're trimming off because we have some unbalanced forces and I actually I'm gonna do a video on trim because actually I have to push forward right which means aerodynamically the airplane the nose has a tendency when I release the stick the nose wants to just come up so we have something called a trim device where uh, we can kinda set or it helps relieve the control pressures on the stick so I don't have to keep pushing over because if you had to fight a plane like that you would be super fatigued alright so let it come up a little bit and I'm looking for the level flight indication so we went about 2,000. I'm going to let the nose come up a little bit. And we're currently registering about 110 knots. Got some really good airspeed going on. And we're currently over Lawrence Township right now. Well, we may be still over Ewing, but I'm thinking more of uh, Lawrence Township because Quaker Bridge Mall, we took uh, runway 6 straight out. Uh, Quaker Bridge Mall and Channel 52 and all that good stuff is where we're headed. Definitely Plainsboro, Princeton, New Jersey. Shout out to anybody from there. As we virtually fly over your town. Alright. Alright. So. Alright. So now we'll talk a little bit about strain of flight. Now, and honestly, flying a plane is really not this hard. Um, once we set our power so we pretty much we got 2,000 feet nailed and we're constantly monitoring our vertical speed indicator uh, which is right here and when that goes up that indicates that we're climbing now we pull our power back and it still seems like we're still getting a little bit of a left turning tendency um, but I am countering or counteracting that by some control inputs so straight level flight, we look at the top of the dash and we look at the horizon. We basically want them parallel. So if I was can it like this, I need to apply left stick to get it right. Just general inputs, nothing crazy. Real nice and easy. Uh, when I used to do inter introductory flights, once I had the, the, the uh, plane trimmed out, I could basically fly the plane with my pinky. Okay, so... This is the DA-20 simulator. I'm going to try to tweak and see if I can make some adjustments because this may be the final simulator that I wind up using. But um, all in all, um, for a procedure trainer, I guess going through your engine startup, run up and all that and everything like that, you could definitely um, get a checklist and um, actually be super ready. I remember when I was in flight training, I've always, I've been using flight simulator and I'm telling on my age since the Commodore 64. And some of you guys don't even know what Commodore 64, what the hell is that? You don't even know what kind of, that is like, whoa, that was the, uh, I guess the, oh my God, the beginnings of uh, just personal computing. Um, and yeah, man, it's crazy um, how long I've been uh, using Microsoft Flight Simulator.
All right. Now, again, like I told you, whichever simulator I find or I finalize on, um, you will be able to virtually get in the airplane with me and manipulate these controls, and we can run checklists and we can prepare you for whatever you need. But um, Microsoft Flight Simulator is has always been an awesome training tool. All right. Okay. All right, so um, I'd like to thank you guys for watching this video. I hope you guys liked it. I don't think that this is going to be the final simulator due to the mixture controls and all that and everything. And I don't know. It's something I'll like uh, talk to the designers or email the designers. And if there's something that they can do in an update or upgrade, man, that would be great. If you can get uh, that RPM gauge to actually properly uh, register and everything like that because it's important for pilots for power settings okay if you can set realistic power settings that'd be great but the instrumentation the attitude indicator is working the airspeed indicator works the turn coordinator works and now I'm just kinda like jockeying around having some fun so again thanks for watching and I'm gonna close this video out um, and let's do a little flyby <laughs> That's pretty neat.